Hello and welcome to SKR Yoga and Wellness. My name is Sam. Thank you for joining me on the mat today. I'm going to be leading you through a yin practice for your liver and stomach meridians. So for those of you that don't know, meridians come from traditional Chinese medicine and they're thought of as energy pathways within the body. And so when, these, when the energy is flowing freely along these pathways, our body and those associated organs are operating optimally. So today we're focusing on the liver and stomach meridians. And so when these are out of balance, it can cause some stomach pain or discomfort. Um, so issues with your digestion, it can cause joint stiffness in the body. It can also cause a lot of worry and anxiety. So maybe if you're feeling any of these things, this yin class will just help to open up those energy highways. So we're gonna be focusing on compressing and expanding these areas. So your liver and stomach meridians start on the top of your foot and your liver meridian runs through the inner portion of your leg, up through your body and into your head. And then your stomach meridian flows up the foot to the outside of your thighs and then up into your chest and also into your face. So we're gonna kind of focus on this entire pathway in today's class. You may want one block handy and yeah, I've talked enough, let's just get started. So you're gonna start sitting on your heels. And since both of these meridians that we're focusing on today start at the tops of the feet, we're gonna start with a little ankle stretch. And you might want a block or a blanket handy for this particular stretch. What we're gonna do is take our hands behind us and you're just gonna shift your weight back until your knees lift up off the floor. And that should create a nice stretch along the front of your ankles. Because we are gonna be holding this for a while, what something I like to do to make it a little bit easier is to just place that block under your knees or a blanket under your knees to ha have a little bit of support so you don't have to use quite so much core work to hold it there. So I've got my block and then I'll take my body back in space, spilling the weight into my feet and just feeling that length along the front of your ankles. Taking some deep belly breaths. as one of the meridians that we're focusing on today is in the stomach. I'll invite you to use a very deep belly breath for the entire class. So with each inhale, really feel your belly expand in all directions, 360 degrees. And then on the exhale, it also contracts in all directions, almost like an umbrella opening up wide and then exhaling, expanding the diaphragm and releasing the breath. Inhale. And exhale.
And to come out of this, just slowly walk your hands forward. And if you had a block or blanket, just very gently move that out of the way. Feel that length through your ankles. You can just move your block off to the side. We're gonna come into a little bit of a shoulder stretch here. So coming to all fours, coming to melting heart or puppy pose. So you wanna keep your hips right on top of your shoulders, right on top of your knees, I mean. And then you're gonna walk out your hands to stretch your shoulders. So your armpits melt towards the floor. In yin yoga, I love that this pose is called melting heart because it literally feels like your chest, your heart, your gratitude is just opening up really wide, creating space. If you'd like to intensify this pose, you can bring your hands together so your palms are touching and then bend through the elbows so your thumbs reach towards the back of your neck. And take a moment to get comfortable if you still have that blanket handy, you might want to just place it under the knees to create a little bit of extra cushion. So we will be here for some time. And remembering, especially in this position, we're in a slight inversion. So really invite that 360 degree breath. Breathing into the stomach, really expanding and contracting like your umbrella, breathing into that back space even, so you can feel your lower ribs at the back expand and contract with each inhale and exhale. Continuing to breathe. And if your arms were bent, just straighten them back out and slowly walk them in to lift your head up off the mat. We're coming back to all fours here. Just take a moment to settle. And then our next pose, we're gonna take our right foot, stepping it forward 
on the outside of both of your hands. So your hands are now on the inside of that right foot. And I'm gonna double up my mat here because you will be on your knee for quite some time. So you may want to do the same. So patting that knee, coming into dragon pose here. So sink your hips low towards the floor, opening up your chest, which should feel really nice after that melting heart. And then if you'd like, just to deepen the stretch a little bit, you're gonna pick up your toes on the right foot and just open them out. So now you're resting on the outside edge of your foot, almost like you're in a little bit of a sickle here. And then continue to sink your hips, open your chest, shoulders down away from your ears. You're welcome to take this down onto your elbows if you wish. For myself today, I'm gonna to keep it up on the hands. It's just how I prefer to rest in this pose. But do what works for you. If you have a block handy, you can even come down onto your elbows on top of a block. We'll be here for about two minutes before we progress. Continuing to breathe, expanding your belly. You're welcome to stay here in this variation of dragon for the next two minutes, or you can progress into a twisted dragon. So you're gonna keep your left palm planted, reaching your right hand back, maybe bending into that back leg and just grabbing a hold of the foot. We'll be here for two minutes, just gently guiding your heel in closer towards your glute. So we're intensifying the stretch through the quads and through the hip flexor, maybe even a little bit into the front of your abdomen on the left side. So this pose in particular is definitely targeting that stomach meridian, part of that pathway, which runs along the outer edge of the front of your legs. So continue to breathe deep into the lower part of your belly to create a little bit more compression in this area, stimulating that meridian. We'll take one more minute.
and very gently with control, release that back foot so it won't slingshot down to the floor. Nice and easy, re-square off that front leg if you had opened up onto the outside of your foot. And then we'll send the hips back nice and slow. Coming back to all fours, let your mat unravel. And maybe just take a couple hip circles side to side. That always feels good after a deep dragon pose like we just did. Now we're gonna do that same thing on the other side. So taking your left foot this time to the outside of your hands. Take a moment to settle. We'll double up the mat on this side as well. And just like we did on that first side, maybe lifting the left toes, opening them out, finding that open hip position, and then allow your hips to sink towards the floor, your chest open up nice and wide. Feeling an open heart. And again, you can stay up on your hands here or lower down onto, onto your elbows. Just continuing to breathe. Continuing to expand your belly. And once again, you can stay as you are or progress into your twisted dragon. So on this side, your right palm will stay planted. Your left hand will reach back, grabbing a hold of that left ankle and just gently guiding it, pulling it in towards your glutes. In these lunging poses, I like to imagine with each exhale that my hips are just releasing closer and closer to the floor. So opening up through the hips, especially that right hip on the side and your right quad. Try not to sink into your right shoulder here either. We're still creating a long neck. So there is slight activation needed for this posture, but just, just enough so that we can hold ourselves up. We're not creating unnecessary tension in the legs or in the hips. We're just allowing these areas to spill closer to the floor, creating that space, using our breath to do so. We'll take another minute or so here.
once again without slingshotting that foot very gently release it back down to the mat you're just unraveling your mat sending your hips back in space so we can bring that left leg to meet the right and once again i just like to do a couple little hip circles here and we'll make our way down onto our belly coming into sphinx pose so working now our spine creating length through the upper back and opening up through the chest here so again you don't want to sink in through your shoulders we still have a little bit of activation just to create that nice long neck and spine and also imagining you're opening your heart up towards the sky out in front of you The closer your elbows are to you in this posture, the more intense it will be. So if at any point you feel that this is a little too intense, you can always just ease off by walking your elbows forward. Totally up to you. We'll be here for a little bit longer in this pose, so get comfortable, relax those legs behind you that we just worked. Feel your heart opening and feel your belly expanding against the mat here. We get that feedback immediately from the floor. Deep, deep belly breaths. Just gently walk your elbows back out in front of you, lower your upper body, release your back. I'm just gonna come back into a child's pose just for a moment. Knees can be as wide as you would like. Relaxing your hips towards your heels and then just melting forward. We're not gonna hold this one for too, too long. Just giving the spine a little bit of a break here opening up into those hips. So in this posture, you can really feel your belly expand against your legs. Try to feel that you're also filling your back space into your lower back and lower ribs. Feel that expansion and that release. And 
And we'll come out of this one. Walking your hands in. And we're gonna take a seat. It will be easier as a transition into our next posture if you're facing the long edge of your mat for this one. So just like I am here, bringing the soles of your feet together for a butterfly fold. So this one is totally relaxed. We have no muscle engagement. Find a nice comfortable position with your heels together and just find your sit bones. Feel that connection to the earth. Your heels can be as close or as far away from you as you wish. Let's just take an inhale to grow tall. Feel that length through the spine after that great sphinx pose and child's pose that we just did. And then on a big exhale, we're gonna curve forward, pull your belly button in and just release. So really just let it go here. Your hands can be wherever feels most comfortable to you. Just make sure that wherever you are, you're not actively using the hands to pull yourself forward. The arms need to be fully relaxed. Sometimes what helps me cue that is just to bring my palms to face up, because then I'm not tempted to push or pull in any way. It's also common here to unconsciously hold tension in the neck. So just check in with yourself. Maybe shake your head, yes and no and just release any tension in this neck here. Especially if you spend a lot of time at a computer or on your phone. We really unconsciously can hold tension in our neck and upper back. So just release it, let your spine curve, let gravity do the work for you. Continuing to feel that 360 degree breath in all directions. We'll be here for a few more minutes. And very gently use your hands to push yourself back up to an upright position, right back on top of your sit bones. And from here, we're just gonna extend the legs out, finding a straddle. So 
I am dealing with a little bit of an inner groin and um, adductor injury here today. So I'm bringing my legs a little bit more forward. We're gonna come into just a straddle fold here. And this is another area where a block may be handy just to rest your head. I find it definitely helps, uh, helps me to remain passive in this posture because uh, sometimes we really want to grip through the legs or pull ourselves forward, but we don't want any of that for yin, and especially if you've got an injury like I do. So taking it easy, let's do the same thing we did in our butterfly fold. So first, just feeling those sit bones on the floor, and you don't want to roll off of your sit bones as we roll forward. So we're maintaining that connection. Inhale to grow tall. Make sure the legs are fully relaxed, feet are relaxed. And then we exhale, fold forward once again, curving the spine, maybe resting your head on that block. And again, you can go as deep as feels comfortable for you. Keep in mind, we are gonna be holding this for a few minutes, so you don't wanna to go to your maximum range right away. I know if you're a dancer doing this class, the temptation is going to be to pull yourself as far into your splits as you possibly can but try to resist that don't go quite to your maximum just go until you feel enough resistance to maintain that stretch for a long period of time and if you're using a block like i am you can always part way through the stretch just change the level of your block so you release a little bit further. Just remembering to remain passive as you do that. So this inner thigh and groin area is part of where our liver meridian runs through. So we're trying to open up and create space here. Continue to feel in this posture, like you're breathing deep into your pelvic floor. So as low into your torso as you can possibly go, that's where you're sending your breath, those inhales and exhales. As if you're literally filling that pelvic bowl with air and then letting it go. And I'm already feeling like I wanna adjust my block, so I'm gonna do that here. Remembering to stay passive, keep your sit bones connected to the floor. And we'll take another few minutes here, feeling that deep, deep breathing.
And using your hands once again, just like we did in butterfly. Push yourself up to that seated position once more. And now from here, I'm gonna move my block off to the side. We won't need it anymore. And we'll bring the legs together. You may need to use your hands to help you. That was a very deep, deep stretch. And we're gonna come to lie down on our back. So take your time, no rush. Making your way down. And right away, we're just gonna hug our right knee into our chest. And keeping the feet relaxed, keep your opposite leg totally relaxed. We'll only be here hugging our knee in for about two minutes. But feel that you're making a little bit of compression on the right side of your body, the right side of your torso. So that deep belly breath that we've been practicing today is a little bit obstructed by that leg pulling in. So we're, we're intentionally creating compression here. So continue to breathe against your thigh as you pull it closer to you. So you will need a little bit of activation through the arms to guide that knee in. Taking another minute or so. And now from here, we're gonna take this knee across the body into a nice easy twist. So your right hip can lift up off the mat, but keep your right shoulder blade pressing into the floor. And we're gonna bring our eyes to the right side. So stretching into the spine here, maybe a little bit into the outer right glute. You can use your left hand just to gently guide that knee a little bit closer to the floor and I've got my right arm fully extended up beside me. You can also bend it into a cactus shape if you wish. As long as that right shoulder blade stays in contact with your mat. So any kind of twist or spiral through the spine is gonna be really, really great for your digestion again we're intentionally creating some compression in one area and creating length in another so it just helps to literally move things along and create space and activate your digestion so continue to breathe in this twist remembering that full belly breath in 360 degrees those liver and stomach meridians together, our yin and yang energies. Breathing deep.
left hand to help you guide that knee back to center. Release it back down to the mat. We're gonna go ahead and repeat that sequence on the left side. So bringing your left knee now into your chest and again, creating that same level of compression into your belly here. And really feel your breath expanding against that leg, leaning into that compression. We'll be here for about two minutes or so. just like we did on the first side, guiding that left knee across the body, finding your nice easy twist. Your eyes this time will look towards the left. Your left arm can be extended and your right hand it can be just helping to guide that knee closer to the ground very gently. Breathing into that twist, still feeling that 360 degree breath even though we're in a spiral here. Feel that twist really coming from your navel. You may even feel a stretch on the outside of your left glute. And this is our final pose before Shavasana. So really enjoy it. Fully experience it and continue to breathe.
hand to help guide your knee back to center. And as promised, opening up into Shavasana. Our final resting pose, so get comfortable here. Take up space, let your limbs just flop open towards the sky, fully giving into gravity here. Trying to release all tension from the body. Now, let's really try to imagine in our mind's eye that energy pathway of the liver meridian running from the tops of both feet through the inner legs up into the torso and all the way across your spine. And just imagine that energy flowing from your feet up towards your upper body. And just notice any sensations that arise after your practice. And we can also visualize that stomach meridian also at the top of the feet, coming up the legs towards the outside of your thighs, coming up through your torso into the front of your chest and also into your face. So this very, very long pathway. In this energy, we're actually going to imagine flowing, starting from your face, moving down towards the top of your feet. So we have these multi-directional energy pathways moving up or moving down the body. And just experience what this visualization brings up for you. As I already mentioned, if there's any sensations that arise, any emotions you may feel, you may even start to feel a little bit of a release through your stomach, maybe you hear some gurgling happening or some digestion sounds going on. That's a good sign. It means that your digestion is on and working. So just sit with this visualization for another couple of minutes before we wrap up our practice and continuing to breathe, returning back to your normal pace of breath. This is where I will leave you for today. Please feel free to take a longer shavasana if you wish. And before you go, do not forget to like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And I hope I'll see you on the mat again very soon. Namaste.